where champions are crowned, where dreams come true. You're watching Fox Sports. It's week 13 in the NFL, and as the country gets colder, <laughs> the playoff race gets cooking right here. It's the NFL on Fox. The first place Falcons win with the Rams, and one more win turns dirty birds into playoff birds. Shazam! The Maltese Falcon is off to its best start ever, and when you can run it, throw it, catch it, you are officially Lombardi contenders. First place in the AFC East is a three-headed monster, but there's only one monster in Miami. That's right, Dan's still the dude, but the saintly ones are praying for a wild card spot. The Bayou boys battle the fish. Another first place team is the Green Machine, as Gang Green gangs up on the Panthers. The planes are flying high with a catching combo called the Man and the Mascot. The Chiefs are Chiefs in turmoil, but now Marty's men look to shake their losing streak. While in Zona, this serpent is poisonous. The cards continue their wild card quest against KC. My kind of town, Chicago is. <laughs> Tampa Bay hits the Windy City, and another loss by the Bucks will have Tony screaming. Well, blow me down. <laughs> Later, the Cheeseheads look to smile again against the Cheese Steaks. One week, the Vikes, and then the Eagles. Yachty, that'll make Favre's frown turn around. Just Win Baby is alive and well, and the Black and Silver are in a playoff dogfight. <laughs> but hey, there's no water for Oakland's Little Napoleon. In a rematch of Super Bowl 18, the Redskins and Raiders ran. With the playoff races heating up, so is the NFL on Fox. Today, the dancing Falcons can boogie down to the postseason. The Bucks' playoff ship tries to stay afloat. The Cards hope their wild card comes up aces, while the Jets want to keep flying to a divisional title. Then later, the Saints pray to stay in the wild card race, and the slumping pack looks to get it back. It's all right here on Fox. And hello again, everyone. I'm James Brown, and welcome to our lucky Week 13 edition of Fox NFL Sunday. And joining me, as always, my three lucky charms, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long, and Chris. Co Chris, why are, you, why are you chuckling? You guys always hold it. You don't see Howie and I over here doing the hand. Because we love one another. We love one another. <laughs> That's a cover-up. Lucky Week 13. Lucky Week 13th. Came out here on the 13th, set on flight 13th, and sat in seat 13th. No, no, it, it's flight 13, seat 13. And you flew out on the 13th. You too? <laughs> oh, yeah. We need to get my man a new shirt. Same shirt every We wore the show Thursday. I'll get him started. I'll chip in. I'll get 20. 10. Does it, does it smell? <laughs> not a thing. I'm the oh. lowest paid guy out here. Not a oh. thing. Does it, does, it, does it smell bad? Does it smell bad? It's oh. got a little odor to it, bud. Now that Thanksgiving is over, it's time to start paying closer attention to the playoff picture. So <laughs> let's set the stage for you. In the NFC, the 11-1 Vikings are looking at home field advantage throughout the playoffs and a first-round bye. Atlanta controls the West and the other first-round bye, and a Falcons win today clinches a playoff spot. The Cowboys lead the East. Now the wild card looks like this. San Francisco's on top with hopes of still winning the West. Green Bay appears to be a shoe-in for a wild card, but they're looking at no playoff games at Lambeau. And the Arizona Cardinals looking for their first playoff appearance since 82 are a game up on the Saints for the last spot. In the AFC, the undefeated Broncos can wrap up the West with the win over the Chargers tonight. Jacksonville leads the Central, and three teams are tied for first in the East. Right now, the Jets have the best division record. That, of course, is the first tiebreaker after head-to-head -head records. Miami and Buffalo, the other two teams tied for first in the East, along with Howie's Raiders, lead the AFC wildcard race. And in Pittsburgh, TB, there you go. I guess they now have the terrible toss to go along with the terrible towel. But folks, <laughs> was it a terrible toss? Just what did referee Phil Luckett hear? Well, we tried to find out, and we took the tape to our audio bay to try and hear what was actually said on the field on Thursday. Now, listen carefully to what referee Phil Luckett heard. 
call it plays in the air. Heads is the call. He said heads, it is a tails. Now, Jerome Bettis admitted on the sidelines to Coach Bill Cower that he did say, uh, tails before <laughs> the coin went well, up. That explains the, Yeah, I was about to that say, Chris. Now, it. Terry, does that exonerate Phil Luckett then? Well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> you screw up. Uh, heads are a tail. Let me see the heads are tails. The, you I understand one thing. Yes, maybe it does, but I heard tails. Everything, everybody heard hey. tails. But if he said, uh, that could throw him off. But Gordon McCarter was the last referee to lose a game check because of, remember, he threw the penalty against the Steelers in 95, saying they had too many men on the field, when in fact they didn't but luck it is under investigation the league is looking into this and he very well could be Chris the first referee in the history of the NFL to be suspended well it's a time-honored tradition in the NFL that you call the toss in the air my question is why why not go to Jerome Bettis and say heads or tails tails okay now we toss the coin get it right I, the whole thing silly this is the silliest thing I've ever seen in the league it took us a while but we finally Got back at you Steelers for that immaculate reception. <laughs> what? We, what? We, you got a mouse in your pocket? What are you talking about? That's the right. Conspiracy That's theory. That's right. Yeah. You backdoored in there on that one off the head, you know. Partner, do you realize that that was drawn up? That oh, was drawn up and please. deliberately. We, you know what? You weren't even involved in that. What do you I care? I was born. You know what? I know we pushed the edge a little bit, but what are you seeing, Howie, with a mouse in his pocket? Uh, we. 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 You, ha, all right, Sorry, time now for our Fox Phew. Watch, and we begin Harvard. in St. Louis, where the Rams are set to face the 8-2 and two <laughs> NFC West leading Atlanta Falcons. Who would have thought we would have been using that expression to talk about the Falcons at the beginning of the season? But all is not well with the Falcons because of quarterback Chris Chandler's ankle injury. Calling today's game is Kurt Menifee, and hello, Kurt. Hello, JB, and here the Trans World Dome in St. Louis doesn't have a nifty nickname, but today it could be called the House of Pain, at least on the injury front. Falcon quarterback Chris Chandler still nursing a sprained knee and ankle will not start today. Replacing him is second-year man Tony Graziani, usually the third-team quarterback. He'll make just his second NFL start. On the defensive side for the Falcons, back from a sprained knee is right cornerback Ronnie Bradford. He will make his first start in a month replacing Michael Booker. The St. Louis Rams had some injury concerns of their own when quarterback Tony Banks sprained both ankles last week, but he will make his 41st consecutive start this week against the Falcons. Now to Chicago and Sam Rosen. Thanks very much, Kurt. Here in Chicago, it's Tampa-like weather, 66 degrees, and it may get even warmer as the day goes on. For the Chicago Bears, Moses will lead them today. Moses Moreno, seventh-round draft pick out of Colorado State, 232nd player drafted this year, would make his first NFL start. He played three plays two weeks ago in Detroit. His linemen say he's composed and is a take-charge guy in the huddle. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have a change on defense. With Anthony Parker still out, Donnie Abraham will start with a sore knee. Hardy Nickerson done for the season. Jamie Duncan makes his second NFL start. That's it here in Chicago. Let's go to the Meadowlands to Ray Bentley. Thank you, Sam. The Carolina Panthers will try to play the role of the spoiler and shoot down the first place Jets here in New York today. This will be the Jets' first game at home since the passing of their legendary Hall of Fame coach, Weeb Eubank. Passed away last week at the age of 91, and Weeb led the Jets to their last divisional titles in 1968 and 69. He did it by winning at home. The Jets will honor their former coach today by wearing this patch on the back of the helmet. Currently, the Jets are in a three-way tie in the AFC East for first place, and Coach Bill Parcells has done it at home, a 4-1 and one record here at the Meadowlands. And he thinks the fans are starting to learn how to develop a home field advantage for this team. And it won't hurt having the spirit of Weeb Eubank in the mix today. Let's go to Tim Ryan in Kansas City. Thanks, Ray. A breezy day, as you can see here in Kansas City, but temperatures approaching 70 degrees. The Chiefs will take on the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals on a roll in the wild card playoff hunt under Jake Plummer at quarterback. They have rolled up 34 points in the game in the last three weeks, and that is best in the league. However, defensively, the strength of their team earlier in the year, they've given up 34.7 in the last three weeks, and that is last in the league. Last week against Washington, they were burned badly in the secondary as the Redskins came back and nearly won that game. So changes today. It'll be Kwame Lasseter moving ahead of the rookie Pat Tillman in the safety spot. Corey Chavis goes to the corner, the rookie from Vanderbilt, taking the place of Tom Knight and J.B. Brown. So that's the story here in Kansas City. They're looking for a win. They've lost six in a row, J.B. 
All right, Tim, I know they're looking to turn it around. Later today, most of you will see the first place Dolphins hosting the playoff hungry Saints. Others will catch the Packers and the Eagles at Lambeau or the Redskins. I don't think I can say that they're raiding the Raiders. All right, folks, in the Packers game, it'll be the return of running back Dorsey Levins. He's been out since week two with a broken leg. Levins has been practicing with the team for the past couple of weeks and look for him today to get, oh, somewhere between five and ten plays. And as we come back in to talk about that, how 11 weeks he has indeed been out. Levins, clearly Green Bay needs him if they've got serious thoughts in the postseason. Yeah, they've got to start getting him ready. And, and in talking to the Packers, they felt that when he came back, he would be ready to play. He would not be rushed. I think the mistake they made before was overusing him after the holdout. And I think that, in, in some way, had, a, had an effect on him being injured. This offense is not the same. Brooks has been banged up. Schrader stepped in as a number two receiver. They get Mays back. And I'll tell you what, the other thing, this guy Davis converted wide receiver from Virginia has been a big key to this offense. If they're going to compete with Minnesota down the road, especially in Minnesota, they have to get this offense rolling well, on all why, cylinders. Why Dorsey Levins today? I mean, they could play Dorsey Levins at quarterback and beat Philadelphia today. Why, why rush I got him? an idea. Let's rest the whole league and get him ready for next week. <laughs> well, you got to get yeah, ready for the, the playoffs playoff down the road. And right. Atlanta, the point St. Is Louis. To win. Atlanta, St. Louis. We already talked about Chandler being out with the ankle injury. But Tony Graziani gets to start as opposed to Steve DeBerg. And why Tony Graziani, I have no idea. His last start last year went four for 18 with two interceptions for 24 yards, got benched at halftime. Steve DeBerg has already won one game for you in relief so far this season, had a bad outing against the Jets. Well, guess what? A lot of quarterbacks have had bad outings against this Jets defense this year. Just ask Steve McNair last week, got absolutely none. I would be with Steve DeBerg today, absolutely. Put me on a jet, let me run down to St. Louis. I won the game real quick before I be back for post game, all right with well, y'all? You're that good. <laughs> uh, hey, not that good, but I just think I can get it back for post You know what this Atlanta defense is? Just a man. second. I got to fly home after I have that. studied this Atlanta defense till I, it is. <laughs> <laughs> they remind me of a warthog. You know what a warthog is? A little bitty tiny thing got a tush hanging out its lips. And when hoop? you see it, got a tush. And when you see it, you just want to slap it because you don't fear it. It's a little bitty thing. But this is what they are. They're like warthogs. They will not, and they're vicious. You corner them, and they get after you. That's the Atlanta defense. They're not, when you know, you ever seen a warthog? Hey, Howie, in D.C., I don't think I've ever seen a warthog. A warthog. Well, right well that's this Atlanta defense. The only problem is we got to come up with some cheerleaders that goes with a warthog, how, and I don't know long, what that'd be. How long has this been? I've only been here a year. I always go, what's a warthog? I'm okay. telling you, everybody in here knows what a warthog is. We're just is. getting started oh, in today's show talking pig. about warthogs, so let's Me. find out what else is on tap. Coming up next on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. They've got talent up the gazoo, and they're the talk of the NFL. But can the Denver Broncos go undefeated for an entire season? Susie Colbert talks to the Mile High men who are getting close to making history. And they're two very different receivers. We'll talk with the athletic and loud jet. I got a hell of a reputation, don't I? As well as the overachieving and quiet jet. Then they said he's done. But now the only thing done for Dan Marino is all the he's done talk. Terry Bradshaw gives Dan the man directions to Canton, Ohio, as these QBs go one-on-one. -on -one. Coming up. Coming at you, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday is brought to you by Gateway. Let's talk about your gateway by Pizza Hut, home of the stuffed crust pizza, the most fun you can have with a pizza by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. And by Energizer Advanced Formula Batteries. No battery lasts longer. The votes are in and the nominees for Howie Long's Viewer's Choice Tough Guys are Randall, Davis, Emmett, Jamal, and Favre. That's right. You, the fan, picked these finalists, and now you, the fan, have one last chance to decide the NFL's toughest guy. Just go online to foxsports.com, cast your last chance vote, and you may win a chance to meet the viewer's choice tough guy in person. Back with Slippery Footballs after this. And in opposite directions. Boy, these guys are unbelievable. The Panthers are 2-9 and nine while the Jets are in prime position to win their first division title since the merger. Speaking of opposites, the Jets are led by their odd couple, wide receiver duo Wayne Krebet and Keyshawn Johnson. And Chris, these guys are definitely different, but they get it done. And this Jets offense this year on a roll with a quarterback to think about it. At the end of last year, nobody wanted and two wide receivers who absolutely could not be more different. What makes Wayne Krebet and Keyshawn Johnson dangerous is the fact that they are both smart and tough. But I'm more of the 
the guy who's going across the middle, uh, he's a little more deeper downfield sometimes. He's asked to, to, to run a little more intermediate routes than I am. You know, I'm asked to do the same thing, but I think I'm asked to stretch the field as well, get up in there and, and bang with the big boys, the, the, the DBs, you know, the safeties. Two receivers, one ball, something has to give. Well, I think Keyshawn lobbies a little more for the ball. Um, you know, I think uh, Wayne is, is uh, in his own way, reminds me that he's, he's getting open. You know, he'll come back and let me know, uh, hey, I, I can beat this coverage. Their lockers are next to each other, but the guys march to the beat of different drummers. Beastie Boys, that's probably, that's probably my favorite, the Beastie Boys. I listen to Tupac Shakur, Biggie Smalls. I love rap music. Our relationship is a work relationship. Um, the media wants to blow it out. They want to do. They want to continue to ask that question over and over again. You know, you and Wayne this, you and Wayne that. We don't even worry about. We go and play our game and have fun playing the game. I agree with that. Uh, you know, people think that we have a you know, disagreement about the book. When uh, actually, when he first came in, before even that came about. It's just we weren't ever going to go out and get pizzas. That's just how it was. Any hard feelings that might have resulted from the labeling of Wayne as the team mascot in Keyshawn's book have been paved over, at least on the field. On the field, you know, it's all business, and uh, you know, we root for each other. We'll knock each other's, you know, butts off trying to, you know, make plays for each other. Keyshawn always seems to be a lightning rod for attention. Take this week's headline in the New York Post. No, not that headline, over there. That headline. This is New York. You, anytime you sit and you will pick this up on the stand and you read this, the first thing you say, oh God, it's about six of us have said the same thing, but because I'm the guy on the team, I'm Keyshawn Johnson, the first thing everyone wants to do is run out and say, this is what I'm saying. I guess he's one of the only per people on the team would speak up and say something like that. Uh, do I think we can win every game um, the rest of the way? You know, if we come with our game face on every week, uh, you know, we have a good chance. And if the AFC's leading pass-catching duo helped the Jets run the table, I can only imagine what the New York Post headline and sub-headline will be. You know, Wayne Krabet being called a mascot by his teammate, I don't care who you are, you're never going to forget that. But I'll say one thing about Keyshawn Johnson. The guy doesn't care what anybody thinks. And after he wrote that book, I called him about every name in the book on the air. And he came in the room and he confronted me personally. Now, I've made a lot of guys mad over the years, but I've never no. had anybody just come walking right in face to face, have it out. We did a little yelling, shook hands, over, done deal. He didn't send in the PR guy, didn't send in the coach, didn't not do the interview. I have some respect for that. No, I, I have a lot of respect for his abilities as a football player and also Corbett is an outstanding third down receiver and these two complement each other extremely well. It boggles my mind how Keyshawn <laughs> would wonder why it's blown out of proportion. When you call your teammate the team mascot, and you love the attention as much as Keyshawn obviously does, people are going to put your name in headlines and they're going to quote you. And the six teams that they've played, the Jets this year, that had winning records, they have outscored them 150 to 58. But in the three losses, they lost to Baltimore, St. Louis, and they lost to Indianapolis. So it looks to me like the Jets rise to the occasion of the talent of the team they're playing. So figure that out. The great motivator, Phil Carolina Parcells. Carolina today. Carolina today. Close game. Vinny Testaverde now 7-1 and one as a starter. Not surprising that there's no controversy involving Foley anymore? No, I am so proud of Vinny Testaverde and all the mess he's had to go through in his career and, I, and the job he's done headed back to the Pro Bowl. A couple of years ago, the guy threw for 4,000 yards and they say he can't play in the NFL. You know what? Ridiculous. Corbett may be able to get over the uh, team mascot comment. As many names as you've called both Howie and Chris and they still have like more. more. You're talking and, about me? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Uh, we go out to eat. Don't like it, but we go out to eat. <laughs> you All right. Who we pays? still have a lot more coming, including a conversation with Dan Marino. He's a nine-time Pro Bowler, but he still hasn't found the one thing he's looking for. I believe in my heart I'm going to get it. And, uh, if, you know, if I don't, I know I can look back and say that I've worked my butt off to get there and try to, try to uh, win a championship. The guy tied with Dan Marino for first place in the AFC East, Vinny Testaverde. More when we come back in a moment.